I read this morning um, your young life was very, very hard. And I know that you said that your mother suffered from a mental illness, which back then people probably didn't understand at all. So do you think that, can you comment on your young life? And sure. Do you think that there's been a change in how, how we, we treat people who are just a bit different from what we consider to be normal? Well, there is still a stigma about mental illness. There's no question about that. It's still there. But now, at least, you can talk about it. Uh, in my case, um, I talked about my mother, and it took some doing for me to get to the stage where well, I could talk about it. it was as I was her. reading it. It was very, very moving. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. it, it was tough to write it, mm -hmm. because uh, I thought, do I really want to do this? Do I want to talk about this family secret? And indeed, what would my mother have thought? Mm -hmm. Because I had to deal with that too. What would she have thought about this? Uh, the way I tend to look at it now, knowing her as I did, because she was a bright woman, but she was trapped in this uh, terrible closet of demons that dominated her life. And uh, she had what we would describe now as bipolar. Uh, she was uh, paranoid, perhaps with a touch of schizophrenia. She had obsessive compulsive disorder where she would stand in the kitchen and dry a dish over and over and over again. And uh, she spent many hours, many days in mental hospitals while I was growing up. And then when I was 14 years old, she had a lobotomy, which of course flatlines a person emotionally and always changes their behavior afterwards. What it did with her was drain her of any emotional content in her personality because what happens is they separate the seat of the intellect mm -hmm. from your emotional tract, your emotional center, so that you have this sort of flat personality afterwards. Uh, and um, I grew up with that, and the stigma in those days was so strong that you could not talk about it. Mm -hmm. You could not tell anybody about it. I couldn't have my friends to the house. Right. And they would wonder because I'd be going to their house all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, they couldn't come to mind. They wondered why. But eventually they caught on, I think, as kids do, and realized there's something wrong there. But my father was amazing. He was an older man. He was 60 years old when I was born. And uh, he said that, you know, you have to accept, Lloyd, that your mother has a brain disease. Uh, That's amazing for his... That amazing era. for the time. Amazing. Because that was in the... Four this was... Well, this was... Her lobotomy was 48. Uh, so he was talking about this in the in the 40s and the early 50s, mm -hmm. and uh, and he said, you know, you have to understand it's a brain disease. She could have something that we could talk about, like a heart problem or cancer, and everybody would be terribly sympathetic and so on. But this was something you couldn't talk about. So we had to keep that as a kind of family secret for years and years and years. And uh, only recently did people begin talking about it, and now, of course. It's almost the flavor of the day, as you say, because uh, a lot of people have come out and talked about it, including a lot of television personalities, uh, and talked about the fact, too, as I said in the book, that it's something you live with all your life, personally, mm -hmm. because you're afraid that, uh, because it is, you know, parts of it can be inherited, it can be the genes are there. So you're going through life looking over your own shoulder as well, wondering whether something will trigger problems for you in life. And uh, so, so now, while the stigma has abated to a degree, it's still there because I know that uh, a recent survey uh, told us that something like 60% of Canadians, if they had a mental illness or they had a mental illness in their family, they still wouldn't talk about it to people. So that's how strong that stigma is. It's there, and it, it, I hope uh, with people talking uh, more permanently about it now than they were before, that we could begin to deal with it as, as we deal with any other illness. Well, and also helping people to get help, to know that it's something that, that can be helped. There that's are, right. That there are ways that people can get assistance. And that's the big difference, Barb, because when I, when I was growing up, uh, there was no way my mother could get any assistance right. for what she had. There was no real medication they could offer. The therapy was pretty fundamental. Uh, so they did the lobotomy really to, to flatline her because she was so erratic. And that was the only cure they had. Uh, and it was, a, it was a popular cure of the time, they thought. Uh, scary and much discredited now, but very popular at the time. But it makes you wonder what people are going to be thinking about in another 40 years about how 
people now are being treated. Mm. So we, sure. don't, we don't know what they'll be thinking, but I wonder what they will be. Well, that's true. And, and when you think that, uh, you know, we all go through cycles in, in this life, mm -hmm. and um, I think we're at a point now where at least we're beginning to be able to discuss it. But uh, you have to remember, too, uh, the discoveries that are being right, made right now in brain science. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much more is known about the brain now than was known before. All this circuitry that ticks around in our heads all the time, we have a much better idea of how it's working now. It's still very rudimentary mm -hmm. compared to other parts of the body. Think Obama has just given quite a bit of money in the States to... To brain to science yes. research, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we have in Canada in the last little while, too. Mm -hmm. One of the basic things in Canada was the Senate report of a few years ago, by, okay. headed by Michael Kirby, mm -hmm. in which uh, it was called Out of the Shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, and it meant, uh, you know, bringing mental illness out of the shadows and getting it it's talked about. It's a good thing about. the Senate has done. We were, we were just talking about the Senate at yes. lunch, right? <laughs> One good thing the Senate has done, yes. What does the Senate do? <laughs> That's right.